Whitney Houston and Michael Jackson, both were vastly talented singers who passed away young, their deaths met by a global outpouring of grief and support. The connections between the two artists ran deep and the similarities between the two were vast. Both would release the best-selling albums of all time, being Thriller and The Bodyguard and Swept Awards shows, more specifically the Grammys and Billboard Awards, their legacy have continued to thrive beyond their deaths, with Jackson and Houston's estates pulling in millions of dollars a year, the two artists would also be coronated with nicknames in the form of the King of Pop and The Voice, to honor their illustrious careers. And both would also make their marks in film, to varying degrees. Houston would be linked to the Jackson family, romantically in more ways than one. Allegedly, following her passing in 2012, Matt Fids, Jackson's former bodyguard, gave an interview to The Sun in which he revealed many of the King of Pop's never-before-heard secrets. One of the biggest bombshells dropped by the British martial arts master was the fact that Jackson and Houston had enjoyed a clandestine romantic affair at the heights of their respective careers. Fitz claimed that Houston practically moved in to Jackson's famous Neverland Ranch, where the pair had a secret romance. Though the furtive fling allegedly lasted just two weeks, Fitz, who had spoken to Jackson a mere three days before his passing, maintains that Jackson never really got over his love of Houston. In 2016 singer Brandy posted an affectionate, never-before-seen photo of the pair. While Jackson may have had a serious crush on Houston, he wasn't the only Jackson that the How Will I Know singer had allegedly hooked up with. Before their romantic rendezvous, Houston had apparently been in a year-long secret affair with Michael's older brother Jermaine, who was married at the time. It's even been reported that the illicit affair was the inspiration behind Houston's video for her hit Saving All My Love For You. Even though Michael purportedly felt a certain bitterness towards his brother because of this, he never lost his love for Houston and, according to Fids, even dreamed of marrying her. Both the King of Pop and The Voice left indelible marks on the music industry during their tenure. Both artists would receive flack for having music which strayed from R&B and traditional black music. Where Michael would be questioned by the black community for his lightened appearance and ambiguous race. Houston would be dogged by criticisms within the black community that she was too white, at one point inspiring Al Sharpton to call her Whitey Whitney. Both truly made their marks in the 80s Jackson would release a slew of albums including Off the Wall, Thriller, and Bad, the latter released in 1987 was supposed to feature a duet titled I Just Can't Stop Loving You, which was to feature Whitney, however Houston's label, Arista Records, thought that, if she performed on the song, it might detract from the promotion of her sophomore album, Whitney set to also come out in 1987. In the 90s the artist would adapt their sounds to new Jack Swing. In 1996, they would both perform at Sultan's Brunei concerts and paid a lump sum fee. Years later, on her 1998 album, My Love Is Your Love, a second opportunity for a duet almost brought Houston and Jackson into the studio together, this time with Houston's song, If I Told You That. Though no clear indication has been revealed why Jackson never agreed to it, the duet was ultimately with another pop icon from the 1980s, George Michael. Both signed huge contracts with their record labels, following their monumental success, but both their first albums of the deal, being Dangerous and Just Whitney, did not reach the heights hope. Following their paralleling career declines, both artists in the 2000s would see several public blunders, between Jackson's, baby dangling, reported drug use, trial and ultimate death, as well as Houston's drug use, crippled voice, and death. In 2009, both artists would begin to resurface, with Michael on the verge of a series of concerts This Is It, in London that might have given final shape and definition to his career, after which he expected to retire from performing. Whitney had returned with a brand new album, I Look To You, both artist comeback attempts would seem futile. With Jackson's untimely death and Houston's critical and commercial panning of her album and live performances. After his death Whitney would talk about Jackson in an Oprah interview. How difficult was Michael Jackson's passing for you? Devastating. I have so many good memories. A few years later, Maker returned to the big screen on the eventual posthumous released movie Sparkle. Ultimately, maybe it's pointless to continue comparing them with each other in life or in death. 
I doubt either artist would feel any pride in overshadowing the other in any race or contest. And both would exchange any victory for one more chance to take a breath and perform one more time. Maybe that's the only thing the rest of us should take away by comparing their tragedies.